Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. Please join me in welcoming Paula Wagner. Thank you, Ken. I was in awe to learn something that I didn't know. This school has produced more Nobel laureates than any other business school in the world. Bravo. I'm an alumna of this university, and you and I are now members of the same club. You are joining an elite group of people, and be very proud of this club and the distinction that goes with it. You are joining great entertainers, brilliant scientists, and researchers that have worked here. And I'm not only an alum, but I'm a trustee. And I can tell you all that the education here, it's not just a quick fix. It's a way of life, and it's a way of viewing the world. A quote, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now for those of you who have jobs and are going out into the world, and for those of you who are looking for jobs, I have one piece of advice for you. Distinguish yourself. What makes you different from everybody else? What is your very distinctive and unique career path? You might have five different careers in your lifetime. I did. I came from the I had a dream generation. We had dreams and hopes and promises. We came from a time of cultural upheaval, of economic uncertainty, and an era in which wars were waged, social unrest divided our country over what was right, we were polarized, we were politicized, and one of the underlying transformative elements was culture. Music was changing, art was changing, and people were expressing themselves through these channels. When I went out into the world, I was so excited about the potential, the prospects, the possibilities. When I got my BFA from Carnegie Mellon, I didn't even wait to don my cap and gown. This is the first time I've ever worn one. I'm so proud to be wearing one at your ceremony. And now I'm a film producer, and I've been in the business for 30 years, and guess what? I have my PhD in the School of Hollywood Hijinks. Believe me, I went from being an unknown actress to running a studio, and while my path was circuitous, I always sought to distinguish myself, and in so doing was generously rewarded. I know you're sitting out there asking yourselves, what's next and why and how? Well, in thinking about these questions, I look back to when I was here and to what I've been doing since then. And perhaps my journey through the movie business can help illuminate yours. I was given a lot of advice. Do this and don't do this and business advice. People will tell you not to do a lot of things or not to try a lot of things. Along my way there were a lot of don'ts, no's, you can't do that, that hasn't been tried. And somehow when I heard the word don't, I did. I'm not talking about breaking rules so much as making new rules. First, I was told, don't become an actress. Well, to be or not to be, that was my question. And when I was 16 years old, I got on a bus, and I went to get a summer stock job in some place exotic like New York or Pennsylvania, because I was from Ohio. <laughs> and Pennsylvania was very exotic. Pittsburgh was uh, the biggest city I had ever seen. Well, I got my summer stock job. 40 miles from Youngstown in Canton, Ohio. Well, then I decided I am going to train at the best place in the world, Carnegie Mellon University. And when I set my sights on that goal, there was nothing more important in the world to me. My heart was in my work. I'm sure you've heard that one a lot. The glamorous work of a fine arts actress, painting scenery, sewing costumes, building sets, I even managed to do a little acting as well. 
My final end of the year program, I tap danced to a poem by T.S. Eliot, scored by the doors. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was cutting edge. <laughs> and when I think about how comprehensive my education was here, I realized how prepared it made me to be in front of the camera as well as behind the camera. And when I became a producer, I knew the importance of every other aspect of the process and was able to clearly integrate it. And when I ran a studio, I realized the critical nature of putting an infrastructure together, of getting everyone to work towards a common goal harmoniously and to quickly put forth product. And by the way, I'm still an actress. I just haven't worked in 30 years. So then I was told, don't go to Hollywood. Another quote, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. T.S. Eliot. So I went as far as I could go. I moved to Hollywood, like every other young actress with 500 bucks in my pocket, a dream of stardom, and guess what? There were no jobs. So instead of acting, my first job was teaching a class on modeling bras and girdles for the John Robert Powers Modeling School. <laughs> and after a few years and a few acting jobs, I went from being a Shakespearean actress at the Yale Repertory Theater to being an agent in Hollywood. And then somebody said, oh, whatever you do, don't become an agent. Well, in between my acting work, I was preparing for this next role. I wrote, produced, and acted in my own play called Out of Our Father's House, a feminist play. I trained a corporate sales force with a course called Method Selling, teaching them how to sell their products. I worked with a group called Imagination Workshop, bringing theater to disabled patients. And of course, that greatest job I had, I waited tables like every other actress in Hollywood. And one day I asked my agent if I would ever work as an actress in this town again, and she said, no, but you'd be a brilliant agent. And that was the turning point in my career in which I embraced the business of movies. The key point here, life will tell you what doesn't work and what works. Be determined, but self-aware. And sometimes you'll be offered another path know when to take it. And as an agent, I was told, don't go to an unknown company that has yet to establish itself. So I did. <laughs> Creative Artists Agency is now one of the leading entertainment companies in the world, and I was the first outside female agent they hired into the company. And that company grew from half a floor to an entire building to an international industry leader. And as an agent in the 80s, my job was twofold. Represent clients and represent the philosophy of the company, which was very much a musketeers-like, all-for-one and one-for-all mentality. This gave me my corporate philosophy and vision that I have carried into the future. This was a culture that supported a group pulling together a basic sense of trust in the organization, respect for the business that supports the company, and most importantly, respect for the art that comprised the company's principal business. Films like Rain Man never would have been made without the entire agency's support through this film's tumultuous journey to the big screen. And believe me, every film has a tumultuous journey to get to the big screen. So if I can inspire you, I say to you, go and make some changes. Be a little daring. Now, that's not to say that you should be a rabble-rousing rebel radical in your respective fields. It's to say, find your way into the system and through the system. Make some changes and help create the innovation and change that is inevitable in all business. Progress often depends on the new and not only the establishment. Another don't? Okay, don't sign unproven actors and actresses. It's too risky. So I signed a young actor named Tom Cruise and the first film he got under my guidance was Risky Business. Similarly, I managed to put another young actor named Matthew Broderick in a little film called per Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Demi Moore in Ghost, Sean Penn in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And, and the results of these films show 
it pays to be innovative. I was also advised, don't switch careers midstream and leave the agency at the top of your game to start a production company with one of your clients. Well, life is like riding a bicycle, and to keep your balance, you have to keep moving. Albert Einstein said that. So I kept moving, and along with my friend and client, Tom, started a production company called Cruz Wagner Productions, and we created the Mission Impossible franchise. So don't get complacent in what you're doing. Continue to look for the next step. It stimulates creativity and business. You know there's no such thing as stasis. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. There is no job too big or too small, and the same will be for you. I found myself a woman in khakis, standing in the middle of a battlefield in New Zealand with thousands of extras from Japan, actors from the UK, US, Ireland, Scotland, Australia, equestrian stunt people from Spain, and voices in four different languages yelling action and cut with my phone ringing on three different lines. And while a war is being staged in front of me, on line one is my son from Los Angeles saying, Mom, I need help with my homework. And the second line is the studio saying, why are you shooting beyond the appropriate hours and what was the addition in the budget that changes the daily cost report and how are we going to finish shooting on time to honor one of the actor's contracts? And then on the third line, it's another studio executive saying, this script your writer just turned in. Guess what? We hate it. What are you going to do about it? So in the midst of horses and samurai charging the soldiers, Guess what call I took? Family comes first. Even when you're standing on a slushy battlefield. The kind of uncertain, volatile, and maybe scary environment we find ourselves in today also presents a great opportunity. This is a time for entrepreneurship. To be an entrepreneur and to do it well is to be, I call it, a renaissance explorer. Someone who's prepared and unafraid to explore a wide variety of disciplines, situations, and opportunities. To be this sort of person, I think, is to recognize how to take business, technology, and most importantly, creativity together to move into the future. It's an incredible time to be entering the business world. Creating new business plans, reinventing old platforms, innovating old technological systems, and replacing digital systems that just aren't working anymore. It's a time for tremendous creativity. It's a time to create your rules, be an entrepreneur, an innovator, and charge your own pathway through the ever-changing landscape out there it will always be tough to tell you when people tell you, don't, no, never, you can't. Well, I say let the word don't make you want to do. I encourage you to learn from your predecessors. It's from the advice, experiences, and caveats of the past that we are given the lessons to make a new future. We exist in a brave new world. This very brave new world is not around the curve or past the breaking wave. The brave new world is now. And while others may view the business in numbers, formulas, dollars and cents, there's an essence that can't be measured. You can't qual quantify the magic of storytelling or make tangible a dream that still causes 16-year-old kids to hop on a bus to Hollywood. And as Shakespeare said, the play's the thing what matters is the quality of your business. A piece of material in my business that can entertain, enlighten, and inspire. In closing, I encourage you, follow your dream. Stay true to yourself. Remember, nothing is a sure thing. Make some luck for yourself. And if you go off course, recalibrate. Go with your passion, not necessarily where people say you should go. Always stay a student 
And remember, keep your heart and your work. I know you've heard a lot of don'ts. Now I invite you, I ask you, and I implore you, dare to do. Congratulations, graduates.